relationship, uh, men need to understand what she's saying. <clears throat> and I told him, I don't like that. You keep on doing it. I'm about to do it here. Amen. That's your inner level. Amen. And, and men have an inner level too. I didn't told her what's important to me. She acted like she can't understand about it. I mean, you got a sense. That's your inner level. <laughs> so, so the other thing is, he, I want you to realize first of all that we all have have a public image that we project. We all have an outside that folks see, and we see you on Sunday. You, you all y'all look good, good. You show up on Sunday. You look like you got it together. Y'all pray together. I mean, there's nothing about you that don't look spiritual. And most of us don't ever know the reality about who you really are. All right. All right. And so the Bible identifies that the David, David. We can all talk about all the things that impressed us by, I'm impressed by David's strength, I'm impressed by his ability to fight, I'm impressed by his, his fighting the giant, I'm a, a Goliath, I'm impressed by, by how he was a, how was a song, how he sang, I, whatever your impression is, the question that's important about life, it's not really that important what we think about you. In the bigger scheme of things, you are not your public image. And God knows that. The real issue of life is not what does the public say about you. It's what does God say about you. Because only God actually knows the real you. In psychology, they would declare the idea that, of course, when a conversation is taking place between myself and Brother Harris, there's six of us talking. There's the, there's the Harris that I know, there's the Harris that Harris knows, and there's the Harris that God knows. And the Harris that, that, that I know is talking to the Hubbard that, I, that, that he knows, but the Hubbard that I know is listening to the Harris that's talking to me. We got a whole lot of conversation taking place between these two people. But the reality is there's a, there's a Harris who God knows, which is the good and the bad. We all have a tendency to not see ourselves honestly inside of the picture. You know, I, mean, I, I, might, I might have talked about Harry, but it was for a good reason. He ain't got no reason to talk about me. <laughs> we have a tendency to have a, a, a slant on how we see things. So all I want you to realize is that we all have a public image. But you got to be careful. God does not look at the outside. God took David. And David was so under, overlooked as a child that Samuel, Samuel, God said, Samuel, I want to see you to the house of Jesse. The king that I've got picked up is going to be found at Jesse's house. So Samuel shows up and tells Jesse, I'm here to find the next king of Israel. Jesse calls all of his sons in, and each one walked in looking good and sharp. And, and the Bible says that Samuel looked at all of them and then God said, ain't none of them here. And so Samuel said to Jesse, he said, well, uh, God say, this ain't none of the sons. Uh, you got anybody left? And his own daddy said, well, yeah, I got, I got a son. I didn't even call him in. His daddy couldn't even see what made him special. Turn to Acts 13. I want you to see what the Bible says, God says about this man, David, Acts the 13th chapter, hear the words, verse 21 and 22. And afterward they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, that's what they asked for, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. For 40 years God gave it to them. And when he had removed him, he raised up from them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony. God said this about David. He said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, as a man after my own heart, who would do all of my will. I want you to see, first of all, that if you looked upon and said, I, I, let me tell you what I'm looking for. Let me tell you about the kind of man that I want to see. I want you to be aware on this morning that God is to look at you and you want to see the same kind of heart inside of you that he found inside of David. I'm not suggesting the idea that David was perfect. He made a lot of bad choices and made some bad decisions. But I want you to realize there was something inside of the heart of David. God does not look at your outside. He looks at the kind of heart that you have that stands with him. 
And whatever God declares about David, I declare to you, if you have the same kind of a heart, the same kind of character, you ought to be the same kind of person that David was. If you're the same kind of person that David is, the reality is God should be able to look at you and say, there goes another one, just like David, another person who's out of my own heart. And if God can't say that about you, what's missing in you? This text is very interesting because 1 Chronicles 29 shows David at the end of his life. He's lost sons because they have been, one killed another. Other was lost in war. He's had a David, uh, he's had a daughter rather, who's been raped by her own brother. He has, uh, he's, had, he's had a moment in life where his own son, he loved the deepest and, and, and a great friend of his coerced together to destroy him. He's a man who's lived through a life of hurts and pains and challenges and complications. And yet David lives and stands here as a man who knows the value of what it means to have trusted God with all of your heart. Yeah. I want you to see, because it's one thing, it's one thing to talk to you when you're when you're 20 years old and a babe in Christ, and another thing to talk to you when you're up in age. Because understand, as you're getting older in life, you ought to be maturing better. As you get older in life, you ought to be able to say, when I was at this age, my level of faith and assurance in God was here. But as I've gotten older, I've learned what it means to trust in Jesus. I've learned what it means to trust in God. I've learned what it means to have life and have challenges and complications. I've learned about the power of God working inside someone's life. As I've gotten older in life, I can look back now. I've gotten past the hard times. I've gotten past the rough days. But I'm going to share with you what's at the depths of my heart as you reach a level of maturity, your life ought to be more clear, more focused, more centered on what makes life make sense. You're supposed to get to be 60 and 50 and ain't figure out where you are. God bless you. So, so as you look into this passage, I want you to see, because David here is writing, uh, addressing in 1 Chronicles 29, he's at a point, he's just declared in chapter 28 about how he's turning the mantle over to his son Solomon, and Solomon now is going to be taking the reins. He says, the boy ain't ready yet, but that's all right, I'm trusting God to get him ready, but I'm looking now at the end of my time, my road is coming to an end. My path's about over. So as we're coming to the closure in this point of his life, he looks like in retrospect and he gives insight. And I want you to see, as you see this man, at the end of the days of his life, he gives you insight to what you need to be. Because to become what he is at this stage of his life, as he's looking at the doorway to death, to become the kind of person who at the end of your life stands here, he gives you insight into the kind of heart that impressed. Beginning here in this passage in First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, and, and beginning at, at this at this juncture, as you look at David in this in this close of his life, I want you to see his perspective on life. I tell somebody, I, I, love, to I love to worship my God. Look at the text from chapter twenty-nine. Notice first of all, and 